Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. This is a Instagram Q&A that I compiled into it and um, I thought this was one that was worth saving. You know, sometimes those Instagram live videos, it's 24 hours and then poof, it disappears. But not this one, I decided to upload it. Um, sometimes the questions that are being asked are things that are constantly, you know, being um, either sent through email or comments or direct messages. And when they're asked on Instagram Live, I can answer it directly, straightforward, you know, no BS, no sugar coating, just an honest answer. And so um, I love the format of Instagram Live because it's so instantaneous. Uh, I don't have to, you know, wait about typing or grammar errors or anything like that. I can just respond and just answer questions that, quite honestly, I think about all the time. So what I typically recommend with these little Instagram Q&A videos is that you just listen and work on other things that you're maybe curious about or working on, painting, drawing, uh, sketching. This isn't a video that you need to watch. This is more video that you can just kind of have in the background. Typically when I'm painting, what I like to do is I play a lot of podcasts, I listen to music, um, sometimes I play movies that I like and I just have that as background noise and so I think having something like this Instagram live video as a background noise It could be inspirational. It could be helpful. It could be insightful. So uh, Thanks again, and I hope you like this little Instagram live Q&A Hey guys, welcome back to another live video. My name is Bobardy Frank and welcome to my studio space I thought I'd do another login into Instagram Live, especially because I just love the nature of it being so quick and easy when it comes to people asking questions and me getting to answer them. Uh, I don't feel like there's a lot of lag time. I don't feel like there's a lot of confusion. It's just pretty much direct, which I love. Um, so yeah, right now there's so many different projects happening at once. So I'm a little bit behind in terms of shipping out certain materials or uh, getting certain works out there in galleries. So there's a lot of packaging happening right now. There's a lot of boxing. There's a lot of varnishing in a different room, priming some new canvases. And I'm supposed to be assembling my easel that I just got in, but I haven't yet. So I'm kind of lazy when it comes to that. I'm also trying to get back into YouTube. So that's like another thing that <laughs> has been causing me to have a lot of anxiety, but I feel like that's definitely the direction I want to go to. Um, I think video content is really amazing in terms of being educational, helping people in a very you know straightforward kind of way. And especially when it comes to people like me that are visual learners, I feel like I have to watch something to better understand it. Reading it or imagining what it would be like, it just seems so much more confusing and there's so many more extra steps when it comes to that. So I think delivering content through speaking, delivering content through showing, um, that's probably gonna be the future what I do. Um, so yeah, just to kind of step back and give you some ideas of what's on the agenda. I do have a piece currently up for auction on my uh, Instagram page, 6x6 Auction. If you haven't seen it yet, this is the piece that I'm showcasing. It's a little eye study, and I haven't taken the tape off the sides, primarily because I still have to varnish it. It's still kind of curing. I put a little bit of impasto inside the paint, so it speeds up the drying time, but it still takes a little bit of time. Once it's dried, I'm gonna add that nice coat of varnish. It'll just kind of even out all those colors and then I'll go ahead, peel away that tape. And what happens is that the edges of the canvas will stay nice and just natural. So it gives you a nice natural um, wood, wood edge. And then that piece will be on the front. So yeah, so if you're interested in going home with this piece, you have to place a bid and it's gonna be on my Instagram page, six by six auction. Other things on the agenda, um, I'm still trying to put together a Kickstarter campaign. So the Kickstarter campaign is like make 100. So for me, I just do make 100 surf studies. Once again, I love the small kind of miniature aspect of using little wood panels. So I've been doing these little surf studies. So it's like, can I make 100 freaking surf studies? I've made like 40, but I've sold half of them, so I've never gotten the chance to reach to that, you know, 100. But I keep making them and keep people keep buying them, so I figure why not make a lot and then sell while I'm doing it, but eventually hit that 100 mark and then launch that Kickstarter campaign. So that's kind of like another side project that I've been working on. Um, some other things, I've been having a lot of fun doing circle pieces. 
there's so many different types of canvases to work on. There's so many different types of mediums, you know, different materials that an artist can use at their disposal. So I've just been experimenting and trying out different ones, seeing which ones really connect with me, seeing which ones really resonate, which ones, you know, make the process of painting that much more enjoyable, especially when it gets kind of labor intensive or very repetitive or just like, oh my gosh, there's so much detail. But when it comes to like the circle canvas, I love just that shape it seems it gives it the idea of like a port a porthole or like a window kind of like if you're on a ship or something um and that's been something i've been exploring so that that whole series is uh the window series and right now i have i think five five or six currently right now in my studio and i'll be shipping them out pretty soon to different gallery spaces um example a behind me <laughs> um but yeah, anyways, the reason why I logged in here on Instagram Live, I guess, uh, is because a lot of people are also artists. A lot of people are, you know, emerging artists trying to figure it out, learning the, the skills, learning to pursue their craft. And sometimes you have to do it while doing other things at the same time. So some people have jobs, some people have, you know, family members, kids, they have a school, they have a lot of demanding things and projects in their, you know, on their plate. But then they also have this passion, which is art. And so for me, basically what I've been doing for the last few years is trying to balance all these different things at the same time. And I've been pretty vocal about it, been pretty straightforward about it. And whenever people have questions or inquiries or you know just want to know more about what it's like to you know pursue art while maintaining those other responsibilities, I'm very open about those things. So if you have any questions regarding you know, products, tools, techniques, uh, approaches, marketing, sales, all those things, this is the time to ask. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of read through and see if there's any questions. Uh, hello, fellow artists, hello. How's it going? Try watercolor. So I first started with watercolor before I went into oils. I had a lot of fun with it, but I just love the intensity and the richness of oils. Like you just can't get that same effect with watercolor but I love the fluidity that you can get with watercolor. There's definitely a lot of, um, you can treat it like acrylic, but then you can also have this kind of um, surreal water effect that oils just simply can't do. Hi from Spain, your paintings are so amazing. Hola que pasa, bienvenidos. I love your artwork, thanks. Your work is very inspirational, thank you so much. Are you in college? Uh, I did not actually go to college. I am a self-taught artist. I finished high school back in 2011, so it's been a hot second. I had the option to go to college. I had the option to go you know, to university and I had no idea what to study. I didn't have like, oh my gosh, like this is who I wanna be. So I was gonna study business just cause it seemed like a general idea, but I wasn't passionate about business in particular. I think I was more passionate about entrepreneurship and being able to develop a lifestyle that you decide how to, you know, how to spend your time, how to spend your money, who to employ, or what kind of um, client you get. Uh, I think that's what I found most fascinating. And so instead of studying, I decided to take a gap year. The gap year turned into six gap years, seven gap years now almost. And uh, art's this thing that I never even ever considered it being a possible career choice or an option. It was, it wasn't until I started getting a little bit of attraction, a little bit of you know sales, a little bit more interest, a little bit more professionalism in how I approach my art that I realized like this is actually a viable option. I am actually now making a lot more money than I've ever had for my art and it's starting to surpass my other avenues or other income sources that I currently have at the moment. So art is something not to take lightly. Uh, art is something that it can be just as fun and interesting and playful as it can be a viable career choice. So what got you into painting? Um, drawing has always been a really big passion of mine. I've been obsessed with just the nature of disconnecting from everything else and connecting with a craft. And for me, I just happen to pick up a pencil or pen or markers or colored pencils or whatever it might, might be at the time. Um, painting was always something I was so afraid of. I try to stay away from it for as long as I could. Um, the idea of using two materials to make something seems so crazy. 
what I mean by that is um, when it comes to like drawing, like with a pencil or with color pencil, it's like the, the material's already connected to the pen or the pencil. Whereas with painting, you actually have to take a pen, like a pet, like a brush, dip it into something and then put it on the canvas. And so there's like this extra step in between. And for me, that disconnect seems so hard or so confusing or so complicated. And then when I realized that painting is simply drawing with a paintbrush instead, uh, that's when I started to realize like, whoa, there's a lot more options here than I thought. So um, what got me into painting? Uh, I think just overcoming that initial fear and realizing that it's not so hard, it's not so, it's not so bad. Um, I think that's, that's what got me. But especially when I saw a lot of artists that I love and seeing, you know, street artists showcasing work in gallery spaces or a lot of psychedelic, surreal, kind of tattoo inspired work being showcased in like really well established buildings and in people's homes. I was like, whoa, like there's a, there's a niche, like there's a, there's a place for me in the art world. Um, how did you get your artwork noticed? Coffee break. <laughs> Um, Instagram. I'm just gonna be honest, like Instagram was the platform that I decided to really focus all my attention on and try to showcase it on a regular basis. What started out as like me posting like selfies of me traveling and my food and whatever turned into showcasing the latest pieces of work, things that I thought were interesting, things that I thought were artistic. And then people started to engage more with the content that was art driven rather than personal life and lifestyle. And so whenever I started, you know, creating work, it was like, okay, what kind of work can I make that I really love making, but then my audience might also be interested in too. So it's like, how can we meet in the middle somehow? And so what started out as like these t-shirt kind of tattoo skateboard designs evolved into something a little bit more, you know, professional or refined and more contemporary, something that you would see more in a gallery space. Things like this piece, for instance, right behind me, where it's like, you could see that on a skateboard, but then you could also see that in a gallery. Uh, that's when people started being more interested. That's when people started asking like, hey, is that for sale? Or like, you know, would you like to collaborate? Would you like to showcase in my gallery? Um, I have a coffee shop. I'd love to see your work there. Like when you have something of value or you have something that people want, you now have leverage and you can start having those, you know, those conversations about the potential options of selling or you know, collaborating on products or anything in that kind of regard. Uh, where did you start? Were you always good at drawing or was it a struggle? <laughs> um, I would say I never really thought of it as a struggle. I just thought of it as an interest. Like, whoa, I'm really curious about art. I really love these designs or these colors or these subjects. I really want to reproduce them in my own style or in my own journals or on my canvases. And what started out as something that's very personal and very self-motivated became something a little bit more social and a little bit more um, community-based. Um, I, I would say the struggle for me was probably the biggest part was switching over from keeping all my drawings in my sketchbook to showcasing that work to others. Because you start to put yourself in this place where you're a little bit more vulnerable. You're talking about your feelings, your thoughts, your emotions. Uh, a lot of artists, what they do is storytelling. So sometimes they're incorporating parts of their life and exposing it on the canvas. And so that can be very raw, very scary, very intimidating. Um, I would say the drawing, that was something that was not as difficult for me. It was, it was less about, um, am I as good as these other people or comparing myself to others? It was more like comparing myself to myself. So like, am I improving? Am I learning? Am I growing as an artist? Am I allowing myself the time and the space to pursue this interest and develop my craft? So instead of me thinking like, whoa, there's so many other people out there that are doing so much better than me, it's like actually a year ago, since then I've learned so many new things and these are things that I can now apply to my future, apply to my career and apply to my craft. Uh, what inspired your subject matter? Sorry for two questions, it's all good. <laughs> Um, I have a lot of different styles. I love, I have a couple different side projects or subjects that I'm pursuing in, um, more of a long-term commitment where it's like, okay, I'm not going to do just one design. I'm going to explore this design in several different ways. And what happens is it ends up becoming a collection or a series. 
it's kind of like signing a contract with yourself saying, okay, this is the parameters within where I'm going to work. You can try things outside of that parameter, but you kind of want to stay within a certain realm. When it came to this collection, which is the off the grid collection of portraits with landscapes, that was primarily inspired by my longing for travel and for wanting to explore the world or go to places that um, really helped to shape me as a person and as an artist. Um, the idea behind it was these portraits would have looks in their eye that are very much longing or contemplative or very reflective introspective because what they're thinking about were all those things that you see within their face. So it's these very bright, vibrant, colorful landscapes, places that I absolutely adore or places that I grew up in or places that I just wanted to return to. Um, so that was the Off The Grid collection. The Window Collection, which is this series over here, I currently work in a restaurant in Big Sur and uh, they have these really beautiful circle windows looking out into the forest, looking out into the ocean. And when you look out, that circle window crops the setting and so it feels like you're basically looking at a painting. And so that's when I started really painting a lot of circle pieces. Some of the other pieces that you might have seen on my page are a lot of desaturated seascapes, like really moody kind of crashing waves or foggy scenes. Um, this peninsula is just known for fog and so when you're looking out at the horizon, especially over the waves and you're on the beach, the colors get very much gray, they get more dark blues, a little earthy greens as well. The sky almost has like an off green color to it. Um, I love the fog, I love that eeriness, I love that tranquility and so being able to capture that on the canvas has been a really fun project. Um, and then deciding to move into like smaller shapes, that was just such a great way to connect with a younger audience. A lot of my pieces, when they're large and they're big and they're highly detailed, sometimes they sell for five thousand, six thousand, seven thousand, eight thousand dollars. Um, typically, you know, a fifteen-year-old or a twelve-year-old or a twenty-year-old can't afford that, especially when they have bills and rent and school and whatever. So having something that's small and approachable became an option for young people to purchase and in also being able to produce in large quantities. So rather than working on one piece for two months, I'm working on you know, a bunch of miniatures and finishing 20 pieces in a month. So you know, the interest, the subject, the, the process, everything was very much calculated, but everything very much had a reason for why I wanted to do that. And I kept asking myself the question, am I enjoying this? Is this something that I love doing? If it isn't, I need to stop or just kind of redirect and to go in a different direction and if it is something I like why do I like it so much and why should I keep moving this direction and what can I do to kind of just expand from that so I hope that answered that question <laughs> um, how do you find inspiration uh, this is a question I get quite often and it's I think it's it doesn't happen as easily to some people as others primarily because they don't really know themselves as much or they haven't spent as much time with their own thoughts to really get to know what aspects of themselves they like what aspects of themselves they don't like what things in the world bring them joy or love or um, make them want to continue doing things or make them want to wake up with energy and um, intensity so what I mean by this is that inspiration is basically everywhere. Like you have inspiration at your fingertips. Anything around you could inspire you. It could be a, you know, a color, it could be a type of light, it could be a conversation, it could be a word, it could be a poem. Um, it could be, you know, yourself. Uh, I think we're constantly getting inspired on a regular basis and it happens so much that now we're just, you know, completely uh, used to it and everything just kind of is just whatever or um, passive or apathetic I think if people were really to ask themselves like why they think something is beautiful or why they like the things that they do they would notice trends like they would start to realize like whoa there's a certain type of color that I really love wearing you know in my personal clothes like if you look at my closet these are the colors that I keep wearing I wonder why that is or hey like these are the kinds of movies that I love going to what's the storyline what are the characters what's the narrative what is something you know what's the underlying theme in that movie that I love that is something that you should pay attention to I think the conversations people are having is much more externally driven like 
they expect other people to create the inspiration for them rather than realizing that the inspiration is coming from within the entire time. So for me right now, things that are inspiring me are people that have, you know, purpose or intention or driven or just have a lot of love and soul and also just like beautiful colors, beautiful scenery, landscapes and new experiences that make me realize like, hey, like I love being me and I love being on this planet. Uh, what's your favorite feature to draw paint on a person? <laughs> Definitely the eyes. I think that's kind of the thing that gives it away. Um, something that I noticed growing up just from being someone who's very quiet, very shy, um, very much in tune with like my own thoughts and my own emotions. I realized that people often have uh, the outward appearance. Like they try to give on a good show or showcase that like, like this is who I am, this is what I do, but then there's this layer right underneath the surface and sometimes that surface kind of gets faded and you start to get to see somebody for who they really are. I think when you catch someone off guard when they're just being themselves and nothing else, like that's what I just love, um, especially capturing in a person. Just like natural, natural, um, like when people are just like relaxed in their own home and they're just being themselves, that's, my favorite kind of scene to, to portray in art. And especially when I'm photographing someone, like I don't like the poses, I don't like the high fashion things, like I just like natural looks. So when someone gives you an eye or they're looking at you and you get to really see someone for who they are, that's my favorite type of person or kind of expression that I like to paint. Um, how long does it take you to do your small auction pieces? It ranges, honestly, like some pieces I painted in 15 minutes and sometimes that there are pieces that I painted in like five or six hours. Like it depends on how much detail I go into it. But regardless of that, I feel like the amount of attention or the idea, sometimes I'll sit on an idea for like weeks, if not months or years, and I will have to like work really hard to sum up the courage to try something new. I've had this idea in my head for literally like maybe a year, year and a half, but I've been so afraid to play with texture. So I think last, last October, that was when I started doing abstract work. I'd never really done that before. Um, it always just been like realism, like copy the image that you see, have like a very strong reference point and just try to reproduce that. Um, giving myself the opportunity to just relax, to let the paints do its own thing, to mix a color without having an intention. Um, just being a kid in the studio, that that took me a very long time. Um, and then, yeah, allowing myself to work with texture where it's like there isn't a game plan. The game plan is just to do it. Um, that's kind of what that piece was all about. Uh, I had an idea of doing an eye, had an idea of doing texture, I had no idea what kind of colors, I had no idea what kind of you know style or technique. And I think the look of like having a very soft eye where it's not fully rendered, where you can see like every single individual eyelash, it's kind of like a blur. And then having like really strong pigmented, um, you know, splashes of color that aren't mixed, where it's like directly, like that's just the intense color. There's no, you know, gradient, there is no shadow, it's just like, pure and raw. This piece didn't take me too long in particular, maybe an hour, not too, not, not too bad, but everything that led up to that, it's been like an entire career. How, hey, how do you get clean edges on your wooden panel pieces? Do you tape them off? Yeah, so I kind of briefly talked about it before. When I get the, uh, the panels online, this is just what they look like. You know, wood panels, cradled, looks pretty cool. I always tape the sides and you have to tape it with a tape that is not too adhesive. If you buy a painter's tape that's really strong, when you peel it back, it'll literally rip off the wood from the side and then you'll have to like sand it down. Even with the softest tape that I found, it still rips it off every once in a while, but I kind of recover a little bit and I make it work. Um, could we ask for suggestions? Um, what suggestions do you have? Uh, are you gay? I am not gay, unfortunately for you. Um, I have a girlfriend and she's, um, she's someone that I didn't expect to come into my life, but when she did, 
I'm so glad she did. And we've been dating for about a year now. So it's, it's been a while. That's like one of the longest relationships I've been in. Uh, WTF. Uh, how do you price your artwork? <laughs> Uh, I price my artwork based on how I feel about the piece. So whether a piece takes me five minutes or 10 hours, they might go for the same price, but how I feel about the piece is what dictates it. Um, sometimes technique or sometimes the amount of time doesn't always correlate with the price point. It's such, it's such a, it's a conversation you have to have with yourself. It's a conversation you have to have with your clients. It has to, it's a conversation you have to have with the demand on your work. Also based on necessity. Like if you're trying to make money or you have to make money, then sometimes you have to sell your work at a lower price. But if you don't have that time constraint, you can hold your ground. You can say, this is the price that this, you know, this piece goes for. And so you might hold on to a piece for a year, two years, three years, five years, whatever. But the thing is with art is that it doesn't lose value over time. So whether you sell the piece today or tomorrow or two years from now, that piece will not lose value. So for me, it's like, hey, someone comes by and says like, I wanna buy that piece, but I want a 30% discount. Well, I'll say, sorry, dude, come back when you have 30% more money and then that way you can buy it. That's just my own take on it. Um, if someone feels like, hey, this is someone that I really like, you know, this is someone that just doesn't have the money, but they love the work, they really want to own a piece of mine, they, you know, ask me for a price range, it's a little bit outside their price range. I'm a human being, like, you can still negotiate, but as long as I feel like I'm getting what I deserve from the amount of time and effort in that piece, then there's no problem with that. So when it comes to pricing your artwork, if you're in the beginning, if you get any money for you know creating work and you're just starting out, like you're doing it, like you're making it. You're getting paid to practice. It's like say you're a baseball player or something and you go to practice and you're just learning and you're swinging away and you're like missing and then sometimes you hit and you know people are like cheering you on the stands and someone says, "Great, you know, you're not the best, you're okay, you don't suck totally. Here's $5." Like you just got paid to train. That's kind of how it feels when you're just starting out as an artist. So if someone pays you money to make work and you're enjoying that, like you're doing it. Now, when it gets into the game of being professional, being an artist as a career choice, that's when you have to really set some boundaries. That's when you really have to like work hard on networking, on sharing, on getting your work out there, on getting your work in places that can increase the value where people that are coming through are people that have money that can afford your artwork. That's a whole different ballgame. Uh, let's see, a lot of people joining. What gravitated you to Pacific Grove? I honestly find that location beautiful. So I kind of grew up around here. This is uh, my hometown, I would say. Uh, technically, I was born in Laguna Beach in Southern California, and that was home for a little while. Then my parents decided to move up north, moved to Pacific Grove, because grandma lives right next door in Carmel. And then uh, in, mid in elementary school, because my mom is French, um, she wanted us to move to France to learn French to be able to communicate with her adoptive mom. So I actually lived in France for four years, went through the school system there, came back, did middle school and high school, graduated from PG High. And then that's when I decided to travel. I lived in Spain for two years, lived in Italy for six months. And then when I came back, uh, Pacific Grove just seemed like a really great option. It's um, it's a really beautiful area. The peninsula is breathtaking. There's so much you know greenery. There's ocean. There's mountains. There's forests, and being able to work in a place like Big Sur, of all places, I think as a creative or an artist, like it's essentially a paradise. So um, that's kind of why I'm here. <laughs> When did you get inspired to apply landscape paintings to portraits of people? Um, so for those of you that haven't really followed me so from the very beginning, uh, back in 2015, I had some health issues. And so I had to quit my job. I was unemployed. I had a lot of chronic pain. I couldn't walk for a very long time. And so uh, during that struggle in my life, I decided to turn to art for healing and um, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, which is like a blood disorder. And so I'd have a lot of inflammation throughout my body. And all of a sudden I went from like working and traveling all the time to being sedentary and not being able to leave. 
So that was when I really started to think, you know, go inside, ask myself questions about who I am, you know, what I want to do with my life, what are options for me if I can't walk again or work again. I thought maybe I'll get into graphic design work. Turns out I hate graphic design. I don't like being on the computer for too long. I don't like drawing tablets. I realized that I missed the tactile feel of pencil and paper or just working with my hands. And so I thought hmm, maybe I should try fine art. Um, and that's when I really wanted to tell a story that I felt was personal, that expressed how I felt in that moment. And so if you look at that series, uh, it's a lot of black and white portraits because my life was devoid of color. And so they kind of have this somber, kind of like hint of sadness in there as well. But what they're really doing is just being very pensive and just dreaming or longing for all those places around the world that are just so beautiful. So that that series was created over the course of kind of like my downfall into my health. And then finally on the upside, when I got diagnosed, put on the right medication, made the full recovery, finally got back on my feet, started working again, uh, working in the restaurant industry just to you know get out of debt, earn money, earn savings, and then be able to travel again but now travel and also paint and love what I do. A uh, quick question, what part of California or the West Coast should I visit? <laughs> uh, California is huge, so depending on if you're in the South or the North, it's a very different feel. Uh, there's NorCal and SoCal, they kind of feel like different states, honestly, like you'll reach a certain point and you're like, it feels like there's something in the air. Northern California is a little bit more chill, I would say. We're much more laid back, kind of kind of like mountain people a little bit. Uh, we like hiking. I would say Southern California is a little bit more fast-paced, nightlife, city life. Um, it's a different kind of energy. The beach is a little bit more warm, so you have a lot of surf, you know, like a surf community, um, skate community, that kind of thing. Central California especially, I would say visually, it's super stunning. It's There's places where you can just disconnect and reconnect with yourself uh, just through spending time with nature. Uh, it can be quite expensive to live here, but the reason why it's so expensive is because it's so beautiful. So that's kind of the drawback. But if you absolutely have to go somewhere, I would say spend a couple days in Big Sur. It is one of my favorite places on earth. <laughs> Um, ah, cute. How did you and your girlfriend meet? <laughs> so this is turning into a little bit less of an art conversation, but uh, if you're interested, I can tell you. <laughs> um, so we actually met at a bar. Um, I was just getting off work because I work in Big Sur, and I went to one of the only bars that you find out there, and there was this really cute girl across from the fireplace because there's these communal fireplace tables. And um, I thought, hmm, I'm just gonna start asking her questions and see you know, who she is or where she's from or you know, things like that. And so I uh, started talking about how she likes to travel and she loves writing and she loves history and you know, she went to school for creative writing. Um, she loves sushi and I was like, wow, we have so much in common. <laughs> uh, and I was like, oh, I should probably introduce myself. So I was like, hey, like, you know, my name is Bo. And she's like, oh, we've met before. And so that's when I kind of had my just like stomach just kind of clenched together. And I was like, wait, what? Uh, it turns out we had met at that same bar a couple weeks back, but it was only because I didn't remember her only because someone had introduced us and it was like, hey, this is, you know, Bo, these are all my friends, blah, 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 name a couple people. And then I was like, nice to meet you. Okay, bye. Well, anyways, she was super nice about it, but um, we started talking and it turns out we actually work for the same company, uh, but she worked in a different department, so we just never crossed paths. Uh, we ended up going on a couple hikes, um, had a couple dates, and then it turns out that we had a lot more in common and uh, the rest is history. <laughs> J'ai passé quatre ans et demi en France. Alors, euh, presque tous les étés, je retournais à Paris. Et euh, comme ma mère est euh, française et ma grand-mère est parisienne, ben, on parle français à la maison. Mais euh, ceci dit, je suis beaucoup plus américain que français. Yeah. So, I'd say right now, I'm in a really interesting place in my life, primarily because... Um, I'm realizing that there's so many more doors out there and now it's time to start choosing which doors to open, which means which doors should I close. 
um, that's a thing where it's like every time an opportunity arises, you think this is the last time that I'll have this chance or like this is so important and you put so much stress and, you know, thought into thinking of what could go wrong or when in reality it's like this is an opportunity and if it goes well then great you know keep riding that wave but if it doesn't then there's always going to be something else so when it comes to art you know things that you want to think about is you know what kind of gallery do you want to collaborate with if you don't want to go the gallery route how are you going to market yourself and get your work out there when it comes to the actual creation or the work when you have a blank canvas in front of you 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 know, you, you want to spend time with this uh, canvas. You want to spend time with your craft. You want to spend time with your art. And so asking yourself the question, what do I want to make? Like, what are my interests? What are my loves? What are the things that I think would be cool or fun or interesting? Um, that's the major question you want to ask. And so when you start creating work and you start creating work consistently and you start developing a style or a technique or an approach that is very unique, that is singular to you and your your relationship with your art, that is something that's really special. And when you find that, you just need to go for it, keep producing, keep learning, keep growing, taking that art class, watching that video on YouTube, you know, connecting with other artists, building a community around those things, just so that the conversations that you're having on a daily basis are conversations that actually you like having, um, conversations that push you in the direction to keep, you know, being yourself and expressing yourself. I think the world needs more artists. And so if you can show up for yourself, you're indirectly showing up for others as well. So anyways, I think that's pretty much a solid Instagram live video. Uh, if you do have any other questions, feel free to ask me. Um, you can ask me on my latest post or you can uh, shoot me an email. I'm not a huge fan of direct message just because it gives me, it gives too much access to me. Like I like having some privacy and typically I just use uh, direct messaging for really close friends or for business. Um, but yeah, thanks again for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, please check out the 6x6 auction page. This piece is available on there. It closes tomorrow, so something to keep in mind. Also, I'll be doing a lot more YouTube, com um, YouTube, con YouTube content. So if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. It's uh, youtube.com slash Uh I'll be reposting this video probably on my YouTube because if I repost it, it only lasts 24 hours. And sometimes you feel like, hey, there was something in that conversation that I really liked. Maybe I want to revisit it. Maybe I need to let it kind of soak in and just try to digest and then incorporate it into my own personal practice. So please check it out and I will see you next time. Have a lovely day.